probably about two. Two five inches. Maybe yeah. maybe twenty feet long, Ooh, and its wingspan big. is probably about ten feet. Uh, and what it is, it's kind of a cross between a bomb <laughs> with wings on it. So it's like a plane bomb. Right, this bomb. one cannot explode. This one has been uh, decommissioned, we'll say. Yay. This was Yay. a design that Germany used during World War II. Yeah. And nice. basically what they do is they'd have a ramp, and they'd put this at the base of the ramp, and they'd launch it. Cool. So that it would kind of go up in the direction that they wanted it to go in. So they'd kind of angle the ramp towards England or towards Denmark, wherever they were launching You them. know, if that thing wasn't Poland. dangerous, I would actually consider it for <laughs> But what they would do is they would figure out the math, and they'd put just enough fuel in it to get it to London. Oh, wow. So it would launch, and head towards London, and then it would run out of fuel. Dang. In which case it then falls, it becomes a bomb. Uh, it's called a V1, it's called a buzz bomb, because the engine on it when it's running makes a buzzing noise, kind of like a zzzz. So if you were in London, you wanted it to keep buzzing, because that meant it was going past you. Uh, when it stopped buzzing, that meant it was going to be landing very shortly and blowing up. Um, they've still found pieces of these in London, some of them have been uh, unexploded. They've had to you know, carefully excavate them. But this was not something that Werner von Braun worked on. Uh, Werner von Braun worked on the second uh, one, which was a V2, which if you kind of ever imagine like the Looney Tunes rocket, where it's kind of like a big long <laughs> torpedo shape with little fins in the back, um, that's more of what he worked on. We have one of those over in the Davidson Center, which hopefully a chance we'll get to explore later. Just over here, we'll kind of turn over this way a little bit. Turn that job. This is our uh, next rocket here. How did you do that? This is a Jupiter Sorry. rocket. Isn't it so tiny? Oh, no. so Let's see if I can knock on this one. Awesome. So that's kind of the bottom section of it. Touch uh, about. So that's just the base there. If you reach up about a foot, you can feel the rib ridging there. That is the bottom stage of the rocket. Awesome. Uh, this is a one stage rocket. Can I get on it? It looks kind of like a giant crayon. <laughs> Here's my crayon. That's an exhaust vent. <laughs> Draw me a picture in space. Yeah. Just so this would have had fire coming out of it. No, it would have been coming out the bottom. That, the, green, the green section that your hands are on, your left hands are on, um, those, that's just the base. Up there is the actual rocket. Hello. Then there would be an engine under there. Um, this rocket looks kind of like a giant crayon. Uh, was used to launch the first monkey knots that we brought back safely from Earth. We took up Abel and Baker. Ain't one on Barry here. Yes. Did Barry um, Abel was a rhesus monkey, so she was about uh, probably about a foot and a half tall when standing on her back feet. And Miss Baker was a squirrel monkey, so she was about maybe 10 inches tall was when Ms. she was standing up. Was Miss Baker launched with a lot of bread or something? No, the <laughs> Abel and Baker were put inside of a pressurized kind of container and then put in the nose capsule of a Jupiter rocket just like this. They were then launched up into space, and they did a suborbital flight. So they kind of just went up, and then came right back down. They didn't orbit the Earth, but they went 360 miles in the air, came back down, landed in the ocean, and they were fine. Um, they did a little, I don't know why, but they did a little like press conference saying, hey, the monkeys came back alive. Uh, they then uh, went to go take the sensors out of the monkeys, because they'd put you know, medical sensors in them to track their heartbeat and everything like that. Uh, Miss Baker was fine. But Miss Abel had a reaction with the anesthesia and did pass away. Um, she was then stuffed and taken to the Air and Space Museum in DC. If you have ever seen uh, Night at the Museum 2, Battle of the Smithsonian, oh, the little movie. monkey in the silver spacesuit that slaps Ben Stiller in the face, uh -huh. uh, it says Abel on her flight suit. That's supposed to be her coming back to life. Oh, that is so funny. Uh, oh, Miss Baker so lived here at the US Space and Rocket Center for a number of years, up in, I think she was 26, when she passed away finally of natural causes, and she is buried here on site. Uh, no, I can't tell you where. So squirrel Aww. monkeys last year. Oh, I know where. Then, uh, is, is it over there? Oh. We have a memorial. <laughs> we have a memorial over by the gift shop for her. Cool. Oh, that's not where she's buried. buried. Where she, you don't know where she's buried? I know where she's buried, but I can't tell. Why not? Wow. Because they don't want anybody digging her up. Ew, why would we dig up a dead monkey? Why do that, okay? I gotta be worried about that. You get thousands that. and thousands of dollars. Yeah, and, and you'll get haunted forever by her. Can we already have enough crazy stuff going on? I want to attack you with bananas. <laughs> Oops, sorry. That one, that one. Okay. Hey, you got the moose off. We're going in some sort of order. Ooh, it's a space station. 
don't know how loud this one's going to be, but I'll try. Finally, someone who understands. I have that exact same feeling. I mean, and you know what's crazy? Over the summer, I was in a book. Right. And suddenly all my clocks started acting funny, and I felt like somebody was okay. watching. All right, this one here, this is a redstone rocket. Um, if you reach kind of up uh, about a foot ahead above your head there, Shelby, that's one of the fins of it. Um, yep. Yeah, it kind of narrows up to a point at the top, and there's four of them, space around it, kind of steer. Uh, the redstone rocket was used to launch America's first human being in space, which was Alan Shepard. Ooh. It was also used for a second human being in space, Gus Grissom, who had a little bit of a problem with his hatch. <laughs> but those both both of those men went up on this redstone rocket. Now they just did suborbital flights again. They just kind of went up, came back down, landed in the ocean. <clears throat> to get up into orbit, we need a bigger rocket. Did like for that, we're going to use this one over here. Hmm? Aren't these balls on this one really thin, like ultra? No, that's thin that's the know? next one. Oh, okay. I'll try. What about try. Alan Shepard? Did Alan oh, Shepard have a lot of sheep? Cheap? No, but he did pee in his spacesuit. Yeah, he did. <laughs> what? He peed in his spacesuit. Oh, Alan Shepard peed in his spacesuit. The reason was he urinated. It was a 15-minute flight. Oh god. So no big deal, right? They're just gonna put him in there. He's gonna launch. He'll come back and use the rest when he gets home. He ended up on the launch pad for four and a half hours. Ew, that's not as. He had to go. That's not as gross as the pee. Well, they didn't give him a urinary collection device. They didn't think about that, because this was our first man in space, they just hadn't thought of it. So, he was like, guys, I uh, I gotta go. And they're like, well, oh yeah, we know you want to launch, Alan. He's like, no, I gotta go. And they're like, oh. Um, they're like, well, hold it. We'll be launching soon. You know, waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, he's up there doing like potty dance in his capsule, and he's like, guys, I gotta go. And they're like, all right, Alan, uh, well, we're not gonna come get you out. Every, all the press is watching, and that would just be embarrassing to have to stop the launch to get you out of there and go pee. Um, so, go. We think there's only about a 30% chance of you getting electrocuted. Oh, God. Uh, so he went in his suit, oh, God. and then kind of sat there in Gross. his own pee. And then eventually launched in his own pee. Ew. That's so nasty. I can, I can proudly say we do not have that space suit here. And America, that is how we put our first man in space. 30% chance to get left in Okay, okay that's the engine of our next rocket. This is the Atlas rocket. That's the engine? Yeah, okay, that's one of the engines. This one is laying down. Can I, can I put a fire thingy on it? Fire, up a little higher. Fire thingy up. All right, this one is uh, super thin. It's about two nickels to two nickels, or two nickels to two dimes in thickness of the tank. That's why we have it laying down. The sound you heard earlier when we were walking over here was actually a generator, which is attached to a pump to pump it full of air so it doesn't crumple in Earth's gravity. It's a balloon. But this is the rocket that we used to put our next couple astronauts in space. It's called the Atlas. It was originally used for intercontinental ballistic missiles. Have you used this far enough to no, probably not, because it's got the air pressure inside. What's this? Yes. Well, we were here in the like Davidson right? Center. Yes. Yay. Yeah, we'll get a chance to go to the Davidson. That's me. Um, oh, but wow. he, uh, originally intercontinental ballistic missiles that took off the missile, put on a person and said, hey, there we go, a rocket. The first American we sent up in this was John Glenn, who was the first American man to orbit the Earth. Now, with Alan Shepard and John Glenn, I have to say American man, because Russia beat us on both of those with one guy. Did any of them pee? Well, I'm sure he peed in space, but he had a diaper by this point. Oh, <laughs> Alan Shepard was a uh, was Russian. No, Alan Shepard's American. As is Gu as uh, Gus Grissom, John Glenn. Uh, they were all part of our Mercury program, where we had just one person in the capsule. So an astronaut is an American, but what yeah. do they call a, a cosmonaut. cosmonaut? Yeah, cosmonaut. But it means the same thing. Cosmo and yeah. astro both mean star, and then not a different traveler. I thought Cosmo meant universe. That's like space, sky, stars, kind of a widespread uh, prefix. Russia beat us. They were, they were in space before us, right? Yes, they actually did both of those things. So. Took us three flights to catch up. Um, their first launch of a human being was Yuri Gagarin, and he went up in space, and he also orbited the Earth on that same flight. So he did both things. He must have been pretty popular. So. He, was, he was pretty popular. He later died in a big crash. So that was one of the reasons why we were kind of like, eh, we don't want to send our really famous astronauts in space. Uh, but I mean, didn't, didn't we go to the moon before then? Yes, that is the only thing we beat them at, was landing on the moon. 
They beat us on everything else. Uh, the worst one was probably Woman in Space. They beat us by 20 years. Wow. They launched the first Woman in Space in 1963. First American Woman in Space was 1983. I think I read about that. Wasn't the woman originally just like the first one? No, for the Russians, it was Valentina Tereshkova. And for the United States, it was Sally Ride. And Sally Ride passed away last summer. No, you're probably thinking Mae Jemison, who's the first African American woman in space. What is she doing? Sally Rogers. Oh, uh, 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 yeah. I hate this one yeah. guy. Dr. Rod. She had her, she had her doctorate in physics. She actually taught physics, I think, at Stanford. Oh, physics. Yeah, physics. All right, so we're going to head back towards the habitat because it is time for the fire drill.